<laughs> well, hello there, YouTube community. Isaac here. I hope everybody watching this is doing swell. I hope you're half as swell as I am because I'm pretty dang swell. So I have a very special video for you guys today. Very special indeed. Now I work at a camera store in beautiful Jackson, Wyoming, which is where I am right now, called Wyoming Camera Outfitters. And they were able to hook me up with something very cool. Let me just show you guys what they, what they were able to hook me up with. <laughs> so they lended me this bad boy. Hallelujah. So if you guys don't know, this is the brand new Canon EOS R5 and the new version 3 600 millimeter f4. Let me tell you guys something right off the bat. I really wish you could feel this from uh, the other side of the uh, internet, your phone, computer, whatever you're watching this on, because it's insanely light. <laughs> like, it shouldn't be this light for a 600. Like I could do a workout video to this. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's, it's crazy light. It should not be this light. Um, so they lended me this and I can play with it for seven days. So what I'm going to be doing is an in-depth wildlife photography review. So there's plenty of videos out there where you guys can learn all the technical specs, every little thing about this camera. That's not what I'm going to be doing. This is a review for only wildlife photographers. So what I'm going to be mainly looking at is autofocus speed, the animal eye tracking on this thing, which I've heard a lot of good things about. This thing will shoot up to 20 frames per second. I'm just looking at the usability of this camera, how it feels, how it functions, all that jazz. It'll have seven stops of image stabilization, which is huge. <laughs> so uh, I'm stoked for the next seven days. It's peak fall here in Grand Tetons and Yellowstone National Park. So the elk are rutting, which is their breeding season. They're bugling. The moose, it's their breeding season. The bears uh, are getting serious about trying to find food for hibernation. So they're very active. So it's a perfect time for me to be playing with this camera. So I'll be letting you guys know my thoughts, how I feel about it in this video. So be sure to stick around y'all because it's gonna be epic. All right, let's get to shooting. Good morning y'all it's uh it's very early it's very dark uh, i apologize i probably look like uh probably look like one of them blob fish or something you know mornings uh, i'm not a morning person <laughs> anyways uh it's 20 degrees right now so it's the coldest it's been in a while which is why i'm super excited to get out this early because uh i'm going to be looking for bugling elk when it's this cold, you can get some really moody shots with them bugling and their breath showing um, from the cold air and all that jazz. So that's what I'm going to be aiming for this morning. So I reckon let's just get to driving and uh, keep our fingers crossed that we find some bugling elk.
It's a chilly one, folks. And uh, I got so excited, I saw a bunch of elk out in the flats, a bunch of big bulls bugling, gorgeous early morning light that I forgot to, to wear my big coat. So I came very ill prepared. Let me get the heat rolling. What am I doing with my life? <laughs> but uh, very successful morning, y'all. Very successful indeed. When I got there, uh, it was pretty dark still, so it was a really good test for low light performance on this camera. I think I was shooting 4,000, 5,000, sometimes even 6,400 ISO. And uh, from the back of the screen, the photos look awesome. Of course, I won't know until I get them back to the computer. Um, and then once the sun came out, the elk were completely backlit. It was almost like silhouettes, which was gorgeous because you just, when the elk would bugle, you see their breath. Um, and uh, it was very, very juicy stuff. The camera, obviously, in backlighting, uh, wasn't detecting their eye, but it was nailing almost every shot just detecting their face, which is super, super impressive in a backlit situation like that. That's where my Nikon a lot of the time struggles is photographing in backlight. So very, very stoked on, on how well it worked for that. All in all, just a great morning, y'all. I mean, holy bejesus. The elk were just going crazy. There's probably five or six bulls out there bugling and their breath was showing and it was just so freaking juicy. I got some good, 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 good. So I'm down here photographing these moose. Sorry, I'm having to keep my voice down a little bit. I'm surrounded by like eight gajillion photographers. <laughs> and uh, one thing that's just unbelievable about this camera is that seven stops of image stabilization. I mean, I'm hand holding video at 600 millimeters getting very smooth motion, which is absurd. Now, with these moose, one thing I'm noticing is the animal eye tracking. It's hit or miss with moose. Very hit or miss. Their, their fur's just so dark that their dark eyes just kind of blend in. There's just not enough contrast, I feel like. So it, it nails it every now and then. It, it bounces to the eye if their head's in the right position. But uh, it's definitely been hit or miss on the eye with moose so far. With everything else, it's been great. Um, and even if it, if it doesn't bounce right on the eye, it just does a big square detecting the face and still nails it so it's a win-win but i think i've got some pretty good stuff with these moose it's a lot of fun Busy day in the park, ladies and gents. Super busy.
Hey, buddy. What are you doing? What are you doing? This is my car. <laughs> well, that was cool. Getting to photograph uh, that mother black bear and her adorable little cub. I mean, holy crap, that thing was cute. <laughs> Looked like a little butterball. It was just this little, you know, you can't tell how small it was from the photos, but this thing was tiny, but it was all just fluff. Talk about cute. And uh, I think I got some really nice shots. Was able to get those videos uh, handheld, which was great. And uh, as well as some photos. I was surprised how well the animal eye tracking was working on them just because they're black bears. <laughs> and uh, you know, when they looked to the side, it didn't really track. But as soon as they face it, I mean, it just locks onto their eye like nothing, like nobody's business. So very fun stuff, y'all, very fun stuff. That moose was cool. Uh, he was just running around down there, chasing his female around, making his dopey little noises. If y'all haven't uh, heard moose during the rut, their noises are so weird. It's like this dopey little <laughs> It's so funny. Uh, sorry I haven't been updating you guys like in the field. It's just I've been, I've been really hyper-focused on getting the shots instead of trying to video myself while I'm down there. <laughs> um, but that was a really good test for this camera. For, especially for the autofocus system there was one time where this moose just was walking directly towards me just walking literally straight at me and uh that's a situation where my old nikon would have completely struggled and just something walking right at me as far as the autofocus system but just looking at the photos from the back of the camera i probably snapped off 12 to 15 shots of that series and all of them look sharp which is uh <laughs> which is awesome and impressive so that was a lot of fun well, I guess we'll move onward and try to find something else to photograph this morning. Uh, well, folks, my week with the Canon R5 has unfortunately come to an end. All good things must come to an end, as they say. Uh, I got lucky, though. I got to see and photograph a lot of really, really cool stuff. Let's see, we found black bears, moose, uh, Elk, galore, deer, we, we found all kinds of cool stuff to photograph y'all. Uh, all in all, I had a great time. I just want to give you guys a quick overview of my thoughts, my final thoughts about the camera. Uh, share with you some of the pros and cons. And let me tell you guys something, there ain't a whole lot of cons, <laughs> to be quite honest with you guys. But uh, I had a blast. I'll just put it to you guys like that. I had a blast. So let's start with the, the pros. The many, many pros. So one of the things about this camera that instantly struck me was just how good the seven stops of in-body image stabilization is. It's, it's a game changer, y'all. I mean, with my Nikon setup, 
it's it's very hard for me to get sharp pictures handheld. Now, all the photos you saw throughout this video, every single photo was handheld. I never used a tripod for stills. I used a tripod a couple times for video, but never with stills. So that was all handheld with a 600 millimeter f4 lens. So that just says something about just how good that seven stops is. Uh, to be able to video and get smooth motion like that without a tripod, to hand hold and get that smooth a video is awesome. Uh, so that was one of the things that really, really caught me. Just the autofocus on this camera, y'all, is, where do I even begin? <laughs> it's insane, to be quite honest. It's freaking insane. It's the best autofocus system I've ever seen in my life. Um, the animal tracking worked really, really well. There was instances where it didn't work so well, and I will go over that with you later, but for the most part, I mean, I probably took 3,000 shots in the week I had this camera, and maybe a dozen of them missed. <laughs> Like, it just, it was absurd. I was photographing elk running around, moose chasing each other, all these things moving, and rarely, rarely missed focus on anything. It was, uh, it was pretty darn insane. Um, the frames per second, the dang 12 frames per second on this camera is awesome. I'm not used to that. Uh, my D850 has seven frames per second, which quite frankly is plenty for me. 12 was a lot of frames, y'all. I had to go through a lot of pictures to edit um, to make this review. This camera has the capability to do 20 frames per second in electronic shutter. I never used that. I didn't think I needed it. I, I just don't want to go through that many photos to be, <laughs> to be quite honest with you. Um, but to be able to shoot that many and, and paired with that fast autofocus, I mean, shooting bursts of 30 images in a row, an elk running straight towards me, using this animal eye tracking, just holding down 12 frames per second and nailing every shot. I mean, it was pretty freaking insane. One thing I never really touched on in the field that was awesome is this camera, <clears throat> excuse me, this camera has 100% focus points throughout the screen. So with my compositions, the compositions I choose for photography, I like to put the animal or the subjects on like the edges of the frame. I don't like them to be dead center. I like them to be on either side of the frame. And with the focus points being all, you know, the coverage 100%, you can have an elk or whatever on the very side of, of the frame and it'll still track it, which is a huge advantage for, for getting my artsy, my artistic compositions. Um, ISO performance really, really impressed me. I didn't really know what to expect, you know, back in the day, back when I was just a little tight five years ago, <laughs> um, if you had a high resolution camera, you sacrificed ISO performance. You know, if you had a, a 45 megapixel camera, like, like the 5DSR Canon, which was 50 megapixels, your ISO performance was crap. You couldn't go over 800 uh, or else it would look really, really grainy. I was shooting 3200 very, very com comfortably on this camera. No problem whatsoever shooting 3200. Even 4000, 5000, 6400 looked really, really good. Just slightly better than my D850. Um, and I've always been happy with the ISO performance on my D850, so very impressed with that. Look, y'all, this whole lag thing, everybody says the mirrorless lag. I've never shot on a mirrorless. This is my first time shooting on a mirrorless camera, and everybody's all, who, who, it lags. If a bird's in flight, you can't see the bird because of the, the lag so much in the viewfinder. And I didn't see a lag. I don't know if it was just me, but I never once had a problem with a lag. I was tracking fast-moving subjects the whole week, never saw a lag. Um, so those are some of the pros of this camera. Uh, overall, just very fun to shoot with. Uh, the way it feels, by the way, is great. The reason I haven't switched, so many people ask me why I don't switch to Sony, and one of the reasons is I just can't like the feel of those Sonys, man. They just, I've got big hands, always had big hands, so to, the, the Sonys have always just felt like a toy, and a lot of the other mirrorless, I just want something to grab. This Canon, it's, it's lightweight, but it feels like a camera, you know what I mean? Okay, so some of the cons, the very few cons I've got. One, battery life, which is still good, I've heard, for a mirrorless. I just shoot my D850 all the time, which ba the battery life is great on that camera. But, you know, I'd shoot, and granted it was cold, which definitely has an effect on it too, but I was shooting in the morning, you know, two, three hours in a row, and it would drain three quarters of the battery. I was doing some video. Um, the battery life just isn't as fast uh, or as, as good as some of the DSLRs, which is to be expected with an electronic viewfinder. 
Um, there was one point where I was photographing elk uh, early in the morning where the camera just froze. <laughs> I, I don't know why. I have no idea why. It wasn't overheating. I wasn't doing uh, video, 8K video or anything like that. It just froze. I took a picture and it just was showing the picture. It wouldn't move. Nothing was working. It was very confusing. I just turned the camera off and on, took the battery out, and boom, started working again. So I don't know what that was. That was the only time it happened. So I don't know if it was just a glitch. But, uh, you know, there are instances where maybe you just missed the best shot of your life because something like that happens. But I don't know. I don't know what happened there. Um, the animal eye tracking works phenomenally well, but it's not 100%. So there's a lot of YouTube videos I've seen where people are saying, this thing doesn't miss. It always tracks the eye, which isn't 100% true. The animal eye tracking works amazing. I never once took it off animal eye tracking. That says how much I liked it. But animals like moose and elk, uh, it, it just missed. Like they, I think it's their dark fur. There's just not a, a, a lot of contrast between their eye and the fur. Um, and it just wasn't tracking just their eyeball like I thought it would. Now, even if it wasn't tracking their eyeball, it still would just grab their face instantly. It would just have a, a subject detect on its face, which means I still wasn't missing. So I never took it off that mode. Um, so those are a, a few of the cons. Like I said, though, y'all, there's, there's like no cons. <laughs> I mean, those are it's a few minor things. Like I went back to my D850. It feels like I'm shooting on a dinosaur camera, y'all. This, this tracking and focusing on this camera is amazing. I've had a lot, a lot of fun with it. Again, huge shout out. I'm actually in the camera store right now. Wyoming Camera Outfitters is the one who hooked me up with this rental situation for the past week. I really, really appreciate it. Um, I had a lot, a lot of fun. If you guys are ever in Jackson Hole, please stop in. You can just say hi to me or, you know, buy some camera gear. Whatever you guys want to do, just stop in and say, hey, it's a really, really cool little store in Jackson. Even in Casper, we've got a location in Casper as well, um, Casper, Wyoming. So stop in. We always love to say hi to you. So that's pretty much going to do it, you guys. I really hope this video helps uh, some wildlife photographers out there. I hope you enjoyed the video. I had so much fun with it. It was very, very sad for me to say goodbye. Goodbyes are never easy, folks. Um, so yeah, if you want to check out Wyoming Camera Outfitters' website, I'll leave it in the description below. Um, and yeah, I hope you guys have a wonderful day or night or whatever time it is where you're at. Peace out, ladies and gents. I'll see you on the next video.